Hey guys and welcome to the Strategy Lab video. My name is Alexander Nikivin and let's analyze the results for unified Gartley's with Pipsage algorithm. I remind you that a Pipsage algorithm is the algorithm that draws swings uh, based on the Pipsage movement. For example, we have uh, swing low to swing high or movement from the downside to the upside and when we have a movement into opposite direction for at least like this 58.9 pips then we have a swing to the downside if we don't have that movement then the swing to the upside continues very very simple okay using this algorithm uh, for every pair I use its own uh, setup uh, for pipsage 45.5 for euro dollar uh, 42.5 for dollar yen it is 45.4 for pound dollar and for euro yen it is 58.9 the largest one okay they are all based on my market research let me show it to you it is called forex market research swings so I actually calculated the average swing for every pair on every time frame and uh, with uh, euro dollar uh, the average correction size is 58.9 based uh, on my research and uh, that's why I set this 58.9 as the minimum significant movement of the market when I say uh, we have a kind of swing anything that is less than that number is simply noise okay the same with pound dollar you can see 55.4 and the same with dollar yen 42.5 and uh, euro dollar 50 sorry 45.5 i will continue doing my market research calculating average sizes of uh, swings of impulses and average corrections and uh, the more pairs i have the more data i have and uh, then i will analyze them uh, using the unified data okay so uh, what is remarkable about this uh, this specific trading method is that uh, it requires active trade management so let's go somewhere to find a pattern okay let, let it be euro yen just suppose it was not invalidated to the upside but goes to the downside at this level uh, this is the limit order entry we just buy it if price bounces to the upside then the stop loss is moved from here to here it is cut by half because we traveled half of risk uh, by the way the distance towards the stop loss and the distance towards the first target are equal so uh, when we hit half we cut the loss by half when we hit first target we close half and move stop loss to break even and then we have a risk-free opportunity to hit target two and this is exactly what is represented here uh, these numbers are for target one and these numbers are for target two and what I want you to pay attention to is the numbers that are called expectancy so uh, this spread for euro dollar average spread is 0 0.6 with my broker and the expectancy with that is 0 0.08 and 0 0.20 for the second target of course second target generates more than the first target you simply let your winners run okay for dollar yen it is it is the same S second target generates more and the numbers are almost the same as well 0, 0, 0 0.09 and 0 0.17 but the spread for this pair is slightly more 0 0.8 okay if we go to pound dollar uh, again second target generates more than the first target and the expectancy for the second target is 0 0.07 and 0 0.18 for the second target so we have a spread one pip uh, even number okay and if we go to euro yen uh, i supposed initially that the euro yen is a combination it should have something in the middle between the euro dollar and dollar yen but uh, we should also keep in mind that uh, in these pairs we have dollar that affects 
the results. It is not simply euro and yen, they also have dollar, that's why uh, they are slightly different. So with euro yen, it is a bit more interesting. Uh, for the first target, for the first target, we have the expectancy almost equal to zero, zero point zero two point half. Okay, well, uh, we still generate something. Uh, the expectancy in absolute numbers says that in each and every trade we generate one pip, and uh, the profit factor is one of five. It means that in uh, in the long run, uh, every dollar that is spent as a stop loss gives you one dollar five cents back. Uh, this is the first target. But look at the second target. And the second target is something amazing if compared to the first target. So with Euro Yen, um, I think it, it makes no sense to have uh, two targets just set uh, the second target only because the first target shows slightly positive result. Okay, uh, with this win probability for the first target and this win probability for the second target, of course, psychologically having the first target you are having more winners and when you have more winners uh, you don't have these uh, large periods of drawdowns you you feel more comfortable and uh, that's why uh, there is less probability for you to self-sabotage yourself and uh, start looking for some confirmations when they are non-confirmations and uh, start looking uh, for some additional filters uh, that were not back tested. So this is the problems why uh, why actual traders uh, fail uh, when they have a strategy. Uh, majority of traders never did the back test and they don't even understand that the strategy may have periods of drawdowns. If you are interested, uh, the maximal drawdown for the first target here is 992 pips, and for the second target is 600. Uh, 28 pips and if we calculate the duration of the drawdown it is uh, the drawdown was 356 trade on euro yen and um, for the first target it was 143 trades <coughs> so it means that you execute 143 trades and you don't have uh, the recovery you are still uh, going lower and lower and lower Instead of uh, creating new equity highs, you are creating sideways or new equity lows. So if you don't know, if you are not prepared for that, uh, of course what you will do, you will either switch to the to another strategy that is uh, well uh, advertised on the internet, or you will try to find some filters, you will try to apply, let's say, RSI, moving averages, or whatever, to confirm your entries to get a, a slightly better result. But in fact, you never know if uh, your filter affects good the strategy. The only thing that you can do is to do the backtest of that, uh, to know uh, that this stuff can happen. And if you will look at different periods, you see that uh, we have drawdown here on this period, and we have drawdown at the different place on another pair. And if we go to dollar yen, the drawdown is also in a different place. And if we go to euro dollar, well, there is also sideways movement, but uh, the drawdown is closer to the beginning. So this is uh, what I call uh, eliminating a risk using the portfolio. Basically, when you have one pair that is in a drawdown, your next pair in portfolio should move to new equity highs. And when they are used together, uh, they make the drawdown smaller. So today, uh, we will calculate the total performance for this strategy, and we will see if the drawdown becomes smaller. So the highest drawdown is, largest drawdown is 992, and uh, here 640, 876, and okay, 900 is uh, the largest drawdown uh, on euro yen and on every pair. Okay, so we will compile them together. We will uh, sort them according to 
from all these two newest uh, we have times here and uh, they will be uh, shuffled in this chronological order and uh, then we will simply recalculate that stuff okay so I will create a new Excel spreadsheet I will zoom it out slightly and then we'll go to the first pair that is euro dollar and uh, I will copy it this way from here to here control shift and arrow to the downside and uh, all these um, all the results are highlighted then I just copy them and I go to my sheet number one and paste it here okay let me use the formatting auto fit the width okay the width of the column is auto fit now I go back uh, go to the downside not back but to the downside of this thing place my cursor here and go to my next pair uh, this time I don't need this uh, line so I start from my second line okay control shift arrow to the downside copy go to my list uh, sheet number one and paste it here okay then I go to my third pair pound dollar control shift arrow to the downside copy that and go here and paste it and then place my cursor here I go to my euro yen results okay what do you need choose it copy and then paste okay so you see uh, I just paste, uh, pasted the blocks euro dollar, dollar yen, pound dollar and euro yen blocks here okay now let us sort them together and we should go to home and here we have sort and filter and the first line says uh, sort from oldest to newest so and it says that expand it automatically the width of because we are not only having the column B we also have a column A column C column D and, and so on so uh, the total um, should be expanded to total results okay done and some formulas didn't recognize so let me fix them uh, first of all we should start from zero here okay and we should start from zero here as well uh, then we go OK and then we go OK we should go to substitute them all OK so what is it Euro dollar had different yes euro dollar has different uh, different type of okay result number one is this so we should type it this way and result number two is this we should type it similar way okay uh, now uh, what we should do we should go and copy this uh, calculating statistic stuff and paste it here uh, auto fit 
okay uh, now we have total number of trades 1858 total number of trades 1458 what is that <laughs> what is the difference uh, because it calc uh, it miss skips uh, skips zero less than zero more than zero yes this one skips zero very simple uh, okay okay so the total win probability is 49 percent and uh, for the second target is 35 percent uh, the average risk to reward is 1.21 and the for the second target is 2.40 and it is 0 0.09 and 0 0.20 that okay now uh, let us also add these numbers so I just go copy them and paste okay maybe cannot copy them it paste it here let me also want to fit the width and then let me go back to the downside where we did here it is let's continue uh, the formulas all the way down okay now what happened oh I think I skipped that let me do it once again copy this and go here and paste it here Uh, then we go lower and substitute that till the end. Okay, now it is done. We shuffled them, we did that calculations, and uh, let's auto fit. So these are total results, 1400 pips, 4 pairs, 4 pairs, 1400 pips generated, not 10, not anything else, 1400 pips for uh, 4, 4 pairs. Okay, and the largest drawdown is 954, well, and where the second target is 119.3 well it is not that uh, very much uh, recovered <laughs> the drawdown is uh, still pretty big okay so uh, what you need to do is simply to make sure that with your position size when you hit the largest drawdown it will not uh, wipe a significant part of your account off so for example if you allow your drawdown be only 30 percent and you only have uh, let's say 10k account uh, let's do the calculation if you have 10k account and you only allow 30 percent so i will type it here 0 0.3 30% then your maximal allowed loser losing period equals to this multiply this and it is three thousand dollars okay so you know that your largest drawdown is three thousand dollars 
but you also know that in pip search it is 900 pips so if you divide $3,000 by 900 pips, you will know the position size you need to operate with. So it equals this divided this. And uh, you should also divide it by 10. Because one pip uh, for a standard plot is ten dollars or oh, somewhere equal to ten dollars on on yen pairs it is eight nine close to ten so your position size should be 0 0.3 and this uh, means that even if you have a larger drawn on 954 pips uh, you will stay within this uh, three thousand dollars so if you trade that 0 0.3 uh, you will uh, generate this amount of money okay so your position size is 0 0.3 now let's uh, use some fixed money management to see how it, uh, how the progression goes okay uh, let's do it this way so we have the total sum of money it equals to this one total sum and it is a result of summing this result one and result two okay so we know when we are mm, risking 0 0.3 it means that we are risking three dollars per pip three dollars per pip so our first initial position size would be three dollars per pip so this result equals our previous result plus result number one this means uh, pepsage multiplied three by three dollars and plus result number two multiplied three as well so this is our first position size and our money management says when we double our account we double the position size agree so we will substitute all these empties and then we'll go to find 20k on equity 20k hits this one and after we hit 20k we close the positions and we'll have 20k our next trade should be doubled the position size it should be six okay this is our next trade then we substitute that to the end and if we hit 40 then we double it once again double the account double the position size double your count double the position size 26 28 28 29 30 35 36 7 35 36 37 38 we're getting closer 39 we're getting closer and closer and closer yes this is 40 and our next trade should have doubled position and double position is 12 this time we risk 12 per pip 12 dollars then we substitute that till the end and if we have 80 80 dollars then we double our position size 80k of course 80k dollars then we double our position size so we hit our 80k here our next trade should have doubled position so what we have is 24 here and 24 here okay when we have uh, 160k 160k then we 
double our position size 160 now we have a hundred 120 130 40 142 130 150 160 is this one okay after we hit that 160 next trade with double our position size instead of 24 we are using 48 let's go to use 48 So um, 140, oh, sorry, 160. Uh, next time we should double at 320. Okay, so we we'll go to see if we can hit 320. So we have 200. Okay, and this is the end. Now uh, let us build up a graph of that. Uh, money management strategy so I go to insert the graph and it looks this way <laughs> now the graph looks this way with this money management we were not risking more than uh, tried not to risk more than 30 percent is our maximal drawdown according to this so this is the graph let me move it to separate uh, sheet so it looks this way yes so all these drawdowns uh, look insignificant when your position becomes larger and larger and larger okay uh, now let's do the calculation of the percentage that we did and the percentage is very easy to calculate so what you have generated in the end you divide by uh, what you had in the beginning first you should have a uh, net income and uh, this is the difference between what you had and what you have now so it equals what you generated minus what you started from so total sum of winners is this one yes and now let's calculate this uh, in percentages so this is your total net income so it equals your income divided initial account okay 18 times 18 times uh, if we use it as percentages okay it is 1000 and uh, 866 uh, percent during the period of five uh, no we here 19 what is this time it is something strange it should be 1999 of course <laughs> uh, the first one is 1999 there is some mistake here and maybe here well, it doesn't uh, matter very much, so it should be 1999. Okay, uh, during the course of 20 years, you have a thousand and uh, eight hundred and sixty-six for this strategy. Let's calculate the average annual return because it will be uh, kind of the same. So it equals what you have generated in your percentages divided. How many 20 years your average annual return is almost 100 percent 93 percent average annual return so you start uh, with this ten hundred and you uh, double it almost every year if you double it almost every year, it will be a bit different. Now it is not average in your return. So 
I don't remember the formula how to calculate the average and you'll return it. It is a bit different. It is not simply uh, just uh, dividing what you have uh, by 20 years because this one is the so-called uh, compound percent. It includes the previous uh, results. Okay, to get this, I think it should be something different. Okay, doesn't matter. To get a thousand return, uh, almost two thousand return, twenty times. It looks like you should uh, double it every uh, every year, but it, it is not that. Uh, let us see. If you double it, this is the first year, second, third, fourth, five, and you already exceeded uh, in five years. So the average annual return should be around 25%. So let us start. Multiply 0 0.25. So this is the first, second, third, fourth. Oh, different. Plus 25%. First, plus 25%. Second, plus 25%. Third, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Okay, it's even more than that. Well, I, I need to find a formula for calculating the average annual return uh, on average. It should be around 20% then. So if you generate on average 20% every year, you will get that uh, total income. It, it is not something that you split by that you split by the number of years. Okay, and now let's use another method of calculating another to, how can I call it? Another method of uh, money management. This one was a fixed position size and the money management was very simple. When account is doubled, you double your position size and your position size is calculated based on your maximal drawdown, yes? And another method of uh, calculating is using the percentage uh, money management. So we will again start from 10k and uh, then we will uh, use, let's say 1%, 0 0.01. That is 1% always. Okay, so we don't need to type it. So this cell will equal to to what? And uh, we will need uh, to have this. We will need to uh, have initial risk. Our initial risk will be equal to one percent. Yes, uh, it should be equal to one percent of your account. And sometimes we hit full risk sometimes we hit half risk because we cut our losses by half and uh, the results are of course different and we should also use some spread and the spread should be equal to one you see you just lost 300 percent because of spread uh, even more 700 percent because of spread Okay, so let's start from 10k 
and let's have it uh, this way one percentage this is our initial risk if we win we win one percent if we lose we lose either one percent or we lose half percent I'm just figuring out the uh, the formula, thinking of it. Of course, it equals our previous amount plus zero point zero one uh, of our account. Well, I need additional uh, additional cell. Uh, so this equals if I need to represent it in my uh, thing. Yes. So it equals if the result total sum. I suppose no, not the total sum. I need it for target one and I need it for target two as well. So I will need two additional cells. Okay. It equals result number one divided uh, initial risk 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1 multiplied initial risk. Uh, because the result number one is already uh, divided by 10 so I will also divide by 10 to make them equal uh, from my chart I used five five digit broke it was uh, typed as uh, 343 but then it was converted into pips as 35.3 pips uh, because of minus spread so this one will uh, tell me how much I generated here oh, it should not be if it is very simple result here no it's not this it is this okay so you see uh, if I lose if the spread is zero my loss is equal to minus one yes if the spread is something my loss is something different because it is also includes spread okay let's substitute that for result one result one and let's have numbers should be numbers now we have if I lose I also don't lose uh, half because of spread I lose slightly more and if I win, I don't uh, uh, win uh, one. I win slightly less. You see that? And when I win two, where is my second position winner? Oh, okay, it is in the next column. So the result, two. Uh, it equals... Let me copy this formula. Copy. I will simply paste it here. And instead of this cell with result 1, I will use result 2 cell. And the rest is the same. And I will also format that similar way. Okay, and you see when I win target 2, it is also not uh, exactly 2. It is exactly true when the spread is 0, yes? But uh, exactly half, exactly 2, exactly 1, yes? but uh, it happens rarely because of spread okay let, let's have one pip as, as spread and now we have our result 1 and result 2 so starting from this we multiplied our 1% by what we get as the result number 1 
and uh, this one percent should be of our account and then we add 0.01 percent of what we get as our result number two and uh, this one percent should be of our account now we have a very nice formula here uh, let's go to format that formula oh. how can I format it? okay now we have it so uh, the strategy is to open first position 1% risk and the second position 2% risk so total is 2% risk and whenever I lose, I lose on both positions and I lose 2% risk if I cut them, I actually lose half percent and half percent and uh, then it is 1% loss ok, let us substitute that and look at what percentage money management looks at ok, 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 we go higher, higher and higher and in the end we generate almost the same so it is uh, amazing there were times that uh, percentage looked much better but in the end we generate almost the same 168, 172, the difference is uh, $400 Uh, the problem is that percentage is a bit more difficult to calculate ok, but at times we had 204, 206 sometimes we had uh, greater uh, things so w whatever you use, I, I would prefer percentage uh, for two reasons uh, because it makes the patterns equal if the pattern is large, if the pattern is small it equals uh, to one another and if uh, with this uh, fixed percentage uh, fixed position size uh, which is starting from three dollar per pip uh, it means that your uh, small patterns winner are not very much significant as your large patterns winner and you can win many many small patterns and then you have one large pattern loss uh, which wipes out uh, 10 your winners and with percentage uh, you can't have it of course uh, one loss will be 1% multiplied by 2% two, 2 only okay, and of course we can start from uh, something different ok, in this case our largest drawdown should stay somewhere within the uh, what? within the area of 30% so let's calculate our largest percent with first money management and our largest uh, drawdown with the second money management so we will create another cell and it, it, uh, the formula for this is that uh, drawdown ok, it equals what? it equals oh, sorry, sorry uh, let me just copy the drawdown formula here ok, let me type it myself it equals if uh, if uh, the maximum if this one uh, the cell that we are checking right now is more equal max it should be rushing then <coughs> ok if it equals uh, the maximal of this one 
if it more or equals the maximum of this one and I should use this dollar sign here so it means that the maximum from this cell and whatever we have so if it is equal or more than that then type 0 if it is not equal if it is not equal then we should uh, first uh, find the difference between them yes and then we should divide that difference by uh, the maximal number uh, so it is this minus minus this this is the difference and we should uh, use them in brackets because we should have it as a whole number so this is the difference between maximal peak on your equity curve and uh, the current number and we should divide it by the maximal peak okay now it's okay and it doesn't seem to work it has the text uh, that cannot be recognized Yes, F. It should be Russian. Okay. Now we have it. Go to format. So this one is 0 0.02. 2%. <laughs> Let's have it this way percentage okay okay substitute it till the end come on do the calculation okay and then let us build a graph let us build a graph and it will be this bar graph bar graph and it says that we we had the largest drawdown of 51 percent on this diagram why is it so why we had that largest drawdown oh guys yes 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 now this is very simple uh, because we were calculating this position size as our uh, maximal drawdown for the first target but we ignored the second target so we should have calculated the position size as the sum of our total drawdowns you see so it was only this oh, we can recalculate that of course we can recalculate that and that's why the uh, drawdown is almost doubled almost doubled we were aiming at the largest drawdown of being uh, 0 0.3 of 30 percent but it is almost doubled because we actually skipped uh, the second uh, calculation okay for the second target uh, nevertheless let it let it be this way largest returns suppose largest uh, drawdowns and now let's calculate the drawdown for our second 
uh, money management for our second money management and uh, I will simply copy this and paste it here and uh, I will change the formula so it equals where is the sum of my second stuff uh, it should be y yes so it is y2 should be equal uh, should be English we'll go to y we'll go to y here then we go y here y here y here y y and y okay now we all have y's uh, this means that uh, it belongs to the column uh, of our second money management rules and uh, we should start from zero if I substitute that till the end and if I build up a graph uh, bar graph Control X, and if I go and paste them together, Control V. Okay, now you can compare the two, the two graphs. Uh, first one uh, generated uh, total net income. Okay, uh, we generated almost the same. We generated slightly more with percentages, with percentages. 172 pips and we generated uh, 168 with fixed position size but with fixed position size uh, when generated that much uh, money uh, we were risking 50% total of our account at time we lost 50% of our account but, uh, that was needed to generate that large amount if we didn't gen uh, risk that much, uh, we wouldn't ever generate uh, 168 dollars. We, we would never generate uh, that uh, much money. But with percentage money management, it is a bit different. Uh, we generated almost the same, but our largest drawdowns are less than 30%. And this is what what is um, wonderful so if you would uh, tolerate a 50% drawdown if you would tolerate that then you can double your position size so instead of using 1% always yes you just use 2% or 1.5 whatever yes so you just go here and uh, double it and here you have it this is 51%. Your largest drawdown is 51, 50%, something similar to this one, yes? So we have now similar drawdowns, if you tolerate that. But what is the total outcome? Oh, guys, it is more than a million. Uh, we need to format that. go back it is more than a million I suppose yes uh, the total outcome Whew. <laughs> this is much better so this is the power of percentages when all your whatever you generate you reinvest uh, into that <coughs> okay uh, so uh, this is the lesson for today and uh, although uh, in my previous videos uh, when I was young and uh, when I uh, didn't do that many uh, researches and I didn't understand that deep uh, deeply the patterns in my youngest video I was 
advocating the fixed position size but uh, now uh, I am advocating the percentage I'm advocating the percentage of course you you don't need to raise that much 50% uh, of your equity curve to generate a million starting from uh, 10,000 during the course of 20 years well it, it, it can be it can be um, there are uh, example of uh, guys generating millions uh, and they were working to generate them for 10 15 20 years yes there are examples of that so it can be it is not something unbelievable to generate a million in uh, 20 years it is something I, i'd rather say standard uh, to generate a million dollars if you work on it okay uh, hope you guys understood uh, this this lesson was about the uh, money management mostly uh, the actually uh, what type of money management you should use uh, with this strategy with uh, unified gutless that presupposes active trade management I mean when uh, we cut half uh, then we cut uh, break even the trade and so on with this strategy obviously the percentage uh, goes much better fixed fractional uh, money management goes much better always one percent for each and every trade and the uh, fixed position uh, goes worse uh, giving larger drawdowns with less uh, net income okay hope you draw some conclusions and I want to do uh, recording this video is I want to motivate you to do your own back testing uh, for uh, different pairs not necessarily unified godlies uh, for different uh, pairs different patterns and uh, to know your numbers because if you don't know your numbers you don't know what to expect if you don't know what to expect you are actually gambling you don't know if the strategy will generate uh, income in the long run uh, and uh, you don't know if uh, the current drawdown let's say this one will blow your account or it will be recovered you don't know it until you do the uh, do what <laughs> until you do the back test okay let me switch it back to one percent I advocate for 1% money management rule uh, generating less and the drawdown stays within the 30% maximal drawdown I like that uh, very much I like this very much not more than larger drawdown is not more than 30% although the win probability is uh, not very high and the average risk reward is uh, not very high as well they are moderate i'd say they are moderate okay uh, hope you like this video if so give me a thumbs up share this video on social media you can find the link to this excel spreadsheet in description you can download it and play with numbers uh, well, they are my numbers, of course, and uh, they are uh, the way I actually executed the trades uh, on my history trading, on my backtesting. Maybe uh, you would do it kind of different, but if you need some formulas to calculate the expectancy and other statistical numbers, of course, you can download that Excel spreadsheet and uh, uh, you will have them. Uh, if you like the way uh, the Excel spreadsheet is organized uh, you can use it for your journaling your trades for your backtesting uh, to uh, write down your own numbers basically what you do you type your initial risk if you have five digit brokerage this way and uh, then you type what is the result on your chart and uh, based on that result on your chart 
the result for Excel spreadsheet is calculated is equal to this and also uh, uses the spread so this is the result of that and then uh, what else yes and as usual guys if you are interested to get the same software if you are interested uh, to do the back test uh, with the same patterns and uh, well you are welcome uh, hit the link in description www.ps-software.net and you will uh, find this software you'll find the video demonstrations video explanations and of course the uh, opportunity to get that software as well uh, everything is explained on my website details are there until then as i told you good luck and good trading hope to see you next time